and welcome back. Um, good afternoon, this is episode number 681, and the topic today is the inverse of yesterday, and I'll get to that in a moment. But the topic today is, attention ladies, how to enjoy a first date and have him enjoy it, have him enjoy it too, or as well. I won't get the title muddled up, but that's what I mean is, ladies first, then men. Yesterday I did talk the other way around, so this is basically the inverse of that talk. So some of this stuff is going to be not repetitive, but the other perspective and some of the whole different thing you've heard before. Before I jump into that and introduce myself so you know who I am in case you haven't seen my talks before and what this is all about. Um, my name is Barry Selby. Hi. Um, I'm a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and I help women create balance in love, life, and business. And I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, which is what inspired these talks that I started over two years ago called Messages for the Masculine, Inspiring Your Feminine Heart, as well as why I coach women and help women live a much healthier, happier life. So now we're episode 681, it's been over two years, there's a lot of these out there. And the topic today is around the theme of how ladies can enjoy a first, a first date and also how the man can enjoy it too. And I'm going to say this from the point of view of awakened perspective, not just... Um, be subservient, some people say, I'll just be subservient, you'll be fine. Bullshit, I'm not going there. So just so you know, I'm taking this to another level. So come along and let's talk about it. Oh, sorry, one thing I forgot to mention. This is my daily Facebook Live I do at 5 p.m. Pacific time every single day. Um, it goes onto my business page on YouTube as well. I'll give you the links to those afterwards. In case you're watching on YouTube, it was on Facebook first, which is why there might be interaction and comments with people who are watching my broadcast, and that way you'll miss out if you're not watching it live. That's a hint, by the way. So, I'll give all the links and everything at the back end, but before I do, let me start with this talk and this topic. Again, yesterday I did a talk the other way around, which was a nudge to men of how to be more more um, effective on a first date. Hi, Jeanette, you're watching with your mum. Oh, I hope they, you both enjoy it. Um, I was talking yesterday to men, specifically, about how they can be better on first dates so that women can enjoy it as well, but also much healthier being in, relation, uh, being in the dating process. So this is a, a flip of the script, so to speak, to speak from the other side of things for the women. So ladies, as I said right at the beginning, this is not about being, sub being subservient. I'm very clear about this. What I'm speaking about though, about how to be a feminine woman in a date to encourage and create the space for a man to be in his masculine. And it won't always happen this way, but here's the ideal first, and I'll give you some not caveats much as different perspectives to give you some feedback so so first of all the thing about being on a date with a man especially in modern times and I talked about this yesterday I think a little bit is that many women many women have been um, encouraged trained informed programmed by society to compete in the business world like men do in fact a lot of women who I know as my clients and friends have been very busy in the business world working and being successful, but the price, well, not the price, but the fact is they've learned how to be like the men to succeed. It's the way the structures work. The world is built by men for men, and women have been playing, playing catch up ever since, and the current setup is still that women are doing things like the men are, so they're acting like men in the business world. The challenge is, ladies, is that when you go out on dates, you may not turn that switch off. You may still act like the men do, taking charge, getting things done, handling all the business and deciding everything. When a woman goes on a date with a man like that, she tends to occupy the masculine space, which generally he has to hold space for. And I talked about this yesterday, how a man has to really own his masculine space so that a woman can relax into a feminine. Here's the other side of that. Ladies, when you are going on dates, it's almost like when you go home, take a bath, do things that put you back in your feminine, remember that when you go on a date. That's why I think it's not always good to go on a date right after work because for a lot of women, you need time to decompress and to reconnect back to your feminine. And when you go on a date right after work, you're still carrying the masculine, get things done, square shoulders, make it happen type energy, which is not very sexy in a romantic setting. Maybe sexy in other ways. Then we're gonna go there. So first thing for women is really reconnect your feminine heart before you go on a date. Hang on. <coughs> it's about the end of this cough I've had for like three weeks. It's about gone, but every so often it tickles and gets my attention. So, get it back on track. So before you go on a date, reconnect to your feminine. That's a great place to start. And actually a great place that a lot of women don't even know how to get to, and I can talk about that in a moment. No, I'm gonna talk about it now. So I'm just rearranging, my, rearranging the schedule in my head. <coughs> so, <coughs> excuse me. Okay, continuing. So, 
ways of being when you ways of getting back to your feminine. As I mentioned, like taking a bath with with bath suds and, and bubbles and relaxing music, candles, stuff like that can really connect you back into the feminine heart. Doing things that put you into your body are really good because a lot of women have unfortunately been carrying the mantle of the masculine for way too long because of their business life and because of the way the world has treated them. And so it takes a while to sort of take that armor off and drop into your feminine. So the different ways, and I have a bunch of things I can recommend, but the first one is really just that self-supportive, nurturing energy. So, you know, bath, soap suds, just even dancing around your home to music can help you get back in your feminine. Um, sm smelling beautiful um, essential oils and colognes and um, perfumes can help too. Different things you can do. So get in your feminine first before you're going to date. Second thing is... Um, Hi Jane, no, thank you for that. I'm glad you found it valuable. Well, we, let's see what happens. I've got more to talk and see what comes through. Second thing is when you're on a date, um, let him lead. Now I'm going to be very careful with this one because a lot of you are going to go, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's like, hang on a second. The reason I'm saying this, letting him lead, is give him the chance to prove himself. Because some of you ladies don't let men prove themselves. You basically just cut them off at the knees before they even start. And you know who you are if you do that. <laughs> The reality is getting into the feminine, yes. Are oh, you getting ready for a date tomorrow? Great. Wonderful, Jane. I'm glad, glad I can contribute to your conversation. And by the way, if you didn't watch yesterday's broadcast, which talks to the men, uh, you might want to watch that for cliff notes just to get a sense of what the man's perspective can be as well. So this is the second part of that. It's like the other side. So letting him lead is... Um, for a lot of women, it's a challenge. Because for many of you women in your life, you've been leading a lot. And to trust a man to lead, especially when he can't do it as good as you, because you know ahead, you know ahead of time he can't do it as good as you, can sometimes be a self-sabotaging move. The thing about it is, a man that is leading, and this is the thing that I'm going to talk carefully into, because a man who really is the sort of man you want to be with, can lead you without you having to worry about it. And secondly, if he does things that don't match what you want, he does receive feedback comfortably without getting all bent out of shape. Because some men... Don't know how to handle when you say, honey, it'd be better if you do this or whatever you call him on the first date, might not be honey. But you may say that he's off, he's getting off course, we want to go over here instead. And some men don't know what to do with that. They go, no, I'm going my way and screw it, I'm going to go my way. That might be a good excuse to leave. Because if a man's not flexible enough to understand you and want to go with where you want to go, he may not be the man that's going to be standing up the right way with you. Because the truth is, a man who's in his masculine really authentically holds a strong, solid space, but is also able to move with it. And he's also not attached to ego. The thing about men who grow into ego more than masculine is they're very much about being right and it'd be very hard to date sort of men like that. Now, some women like that because they don't want to think for themselves. And for, to a degree, that can work. But I feel that for most of them, the modern women, women who are growing and more owning their feminine as well as doing things in the world, is they need a man that can hold the masculine space so she can let go of it comfortably because she can trust him. That's a big part of this too. But also, will take course corrective feedback effectively and apply it the challenge with men i know because I, I am one and i've done things like this myself is sometimes we get an idea in our head we get told we're going to do something a certain thing and we're often like three miles down the road before we even start without realizing there's more feedback more coaching more guidance so ladies when you go on a first date be willing to let him lead and be willing to encourage him with guidance that is positive so not saying you did it wrong saying, honey, I love what you're doing, but like, can we do this instead, or can we go over here? So you, you encourage and you lead. In a way, it's a secondary leading, because what you're doing is you're encouraging to take the lead the direction you want. Subtle, but a lot of you ladies know how to do this, which is powerful. So that's one thing, is letting him lead. Thirdly, is let him take care of you. A lot of women I know, because I've been out with some of them, are so self-sufficient and so autonomous and so clear in their, their way of doing things, again, because they're in the masculine a lot, they don't allow a man to take care of them. Let him open the door. Let him get your chair. Let him help you with a coat. Now, if he doesn't do it, there may be some feedback in there. But at least give him the chance. Because if he doesn't even, if he, if he wants to offer and you shut him down, he's going to stop doing it. But frankly, ladies, if you want to get really taken care of and really be in your feminine and enjoy being in a relationship, you want a man that will step up and be honorable and be a gentleman with you. So part of that is enabling him by making the space for that to happen. So that's three. Let's see, these, these weren't in scripted or in order. These are just the ones that are coming forward. Um, number four is... Hmm. <laughs> number four that just came up is take up your space. 
the challenge with a lot of women going on dates that I've seen as well is sometimes they put up with a lot of crap. They would just go along with what's going on because the man's running the show and they will let him lead, but they don't really stand up for what they want either. And so I'm saying is take up your space, take up your beingness so that you're not, so that, so that you are participating in the date, but you're not just an idle passenger. You're a navigator, so to speak. In a lot of ways, that's interesting. Okay, a lot of ways what works well for a relationship, for dating and for romance is when the man drives, but the women navigates. And I don't mean that like she's telling him where to go all the time. What I mean is he has the guidance for them moving the relationship forward or moving the date forward, but you have the presence, awareness, and the ability to ask for what you want to get what you want from the date. It's not recommended in my book that when you go on a date, you put up with whatever's put in front of you. That isn't choosing what you want. There's a much healthier way of doing that. So that's number four, is really taking up your space and to really be willing to say no when it's right. Because the other thing about this, when you go on your first date, being willing to say no is important. And I get to that as part of number five. But also staying, what, holding your space for what you really want is important. So number five, saying no. I'm gonna get, get a lot of men pissed off at me about this one. But don't rush into sex. I mean, you may be so horny you want to jump in his bones right there and then great. If that's what works for you, fine. But what I mean about this is we men are wired to accomplish goals. That's the wiring we have. As men, and especially as masculine men, we are focused on goal, goal acquisition and completion of tasks. In dating, for most men, the goal of a date is to have sex. I'm sorry to say it this way, but it's the way it is. Even first dates have that in the mindset for a lot of men. It doesn't mean they're gonna follow through on it, but it's in their awareness. What I'm saying basically is say no internally so that you don't necessarily jump that too easily. The reason I'm saying this is because a lot of men, once they have had sex, they're done. And I mean it in the sense that the goal completion, the goal orientation, I've talked about this before in my book about relationships and having next goals and next steps, is that if you, if a man goes out with a woman and he gets what he thinks is the goal with her, which is maybe to go to bed with her, he doesn't have anything to go for after that. He's done, he's complete, he walks away. So women, you may have experienced this where you had a sex with a man early on and after that the relationship died, there's nothing there, especially if an early date. Now, that's not necessarily true if you've already established a relationship because once you have sex with a man in a relationship, there's a whole lot more you can put in place to create next step goals. That's one thing of the secret set about having a healthy relationship for a man has to be next steps, next goals, next visions. So that sex isn't the end result. It's just one of the goals along the way, like a milestone. That's a much bigger topic to talk about, but I'm talking about for first dates, be aware of that. So saying no is a healthy way to create a healthy boundary, but also to have a, um, let's say this another way, to have a clear um, understanding of what's gonna happen. So you can take care of yourself, take care of the framework and be honorable. If, the man, if you feel like if you don't have sex with him, somehow he's gonna be disappointed in you, maybe so, but it's nothing to do with you. So I'm really clear about this is first dates, sex is off the table, unless it's something you really wanna go in with, That's a, but be clear about the choice. So I'm not saying no or yes, saying be clear about your choice, but make sure you, make, you have a conscious choice, don't make it a default, because men are hungry for that almost automatically in first dates. Most men who are getting aware, which I've been learning myself, is how to prolong the, 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 the chase in a way. You know, you know the, the, if you know the understanding, it's like how men are chasing women is what it's about. So creating a thing where you don't give them the carrot, you keep them chasing a carrot, so to speak. It's pretty bad analogies. It's much more important to have that space and have that um, play that continues. Because frankly, some of the joy of romance and dating for men is the playfulness and the intimacy and the foreplay, which is basically could be four or five dates worth of foreplay, which is not, um, it's sexual in nature by the way it connects and communicates between the two of you, that's the intimacy. Now, some men have no skill in intimacy, I know, but a lot of your ladies are, so there can be something you can teach them. Anyway, that's another piece of the conversation. So that's number five, four, five, five, I think. Um, what else do I want to put in there? I did talk about this earlier, but I'm gonna give you as a PS, and this one is about, is really take care of yourself. Let him lead, I talked about it as number two. Yeah, number two. And that's important to have him let him lead, but also take care of yourself, which means keep your awareness about you, especially on first dates. If you're going up with somebody you don't know, blindly believing what they're teaching you, telling you, sharing with you, directing you, 
can't get you in trouble. So I'm really clear about being willing to take care of yourself, which means that if it's not going, if things aren't going the way you want, say no, step out, take care of yourself. This is kind of blending a few of the points, but my point is really this, is when you go on a first date, yes, you wanna have a great time, and you want, ideally he can have a great time too, and you wanna make sure that you're, you're taking care of yourself at the same time. So this is my reminder, because this is really in a way a reflection from yesterday's talk, which is about how men can enjoy the first dates, how to be more effective. Sometimes the way into, excuse me, the way to be more effective is to say no and walk away. So be willing to have that as your ace in the hole, so to speak, because the truth is a lot of times when you go on dates, there's a feeling like you have to go through a certain number of hoops and do certain things because the rules. I don't agree with that, as you may know if you watch my broadcasts. It's a lot about having clear boundaries, enjoying the ride, but also being clear that when it doesn't line up, you say no. So that's that one. I think that's everything I want to talk about because really the main thing is at the beginning is about being feminine and really letting him lead are the sort of the introductions for all the women how to be more effective on dates to have a much more great time because when you let him lead you can relax and enjoy the ride so to speak and enjoy the journey but again have awareness about you have be willing to give feedback to, to course correct and also choose a man that be willing to hear that feedback but ultimately it's about having a um an interactive dance that grows together. Even on the first date, you can play this dance together. And as I mentioned yesterday in the other broadcast, it was really about how men have to hold that space in a different way than done before. Um, this is a shorter version because the other one was a much deeper cut and it talks about a lot about both sides. This is more specifically for the women's side of the conversation. So if you didn't see yesterday's broadcast, I do invite you to go back and watch that one. That was number 680. And that was about how men can enjoy the first date and then make sure the woman does too. This is the flip side of that for the ladies, how you can enjoy the first date. Um, yeah, let him lead. That was one of the ones that talks about. So Jane, yes. So definitely some, if you made some notes that might've helped you, that was like five keys to have much better first dates. Actually, you've got better, better dates, period. And because I'm, if you watch my broadcast, you, know, you may have become aware that I'm very passionate about women being their feminine because I believe the feminine energetic is going to change the planet. It's going to save our world. It's a big thing for me in my messaging and my work and where I'm going. And this piece is subtle yet clear that for a lot of women, the dating arena, romantic relationship arena, is a place they forget to be in their feminine. So letting him lead almost encourages him to step into his masculine so you can relax into your feminine. It doesn't always work that way because sometimes the man's in his ego, not in his masculine, and he's out of whack with that, but he thinks, oh great, I'm running the show, I'm in charge, great, I'm, in, I'm right, which is the way a lot of men are. So I guess what I'm realizing I'm getting to a deeper trail through to this is about how with the letting him lead, it's letting him lead when you can trust him because some men aren't trustworthy at this point. So letting him lead is not a, not a blind, you must do that. So let me, let me um, adjust what I said earlier. When I say let him lead, I think I said it then, but I'm saying it more clearly now, is you definitely want to choose, excuse me, you definitely want to trust your own intuition. When you're in your feminine, as I mentioned at the beginning, and you're going on dates, really be in a place where you can let him lead, but your wits are around you, or wits are about you, as I mentioned a little bit earlier too is being present, being aware, and taking care of yourself. So let him lead, but also know that you can also take the reins away from him. So you can take charge and do what you need to do if it's not working the way you want. But it, do it from the place of feminine heart. Again, because if you do it from the masculine, which a lot of women have been out there doing in the world, what you end up doing is you end up, becoming in a, you end up being in a battle with his energy, because energy, it's masculine, masculine, which is competitive. It doesn't work. And it's not fun. But when you're feminine, then you can actually as weird as it sounds, take charge of the, of the date and, re, and, re, and redirect the date, and he won't take offense necessarily. Now, if he's in his ego, that's another topic, as I mentioned, about being right versus being in a place of masculine heart. But for me, there's such a, a great possibility for wonderful connections in dates and romance that comes from a place of masculine heart and feminine heart to come together in a very healthy way. So this is kind of my contribution to that conversation. So um, I think that's it. I didn't see any more like, points to drop on this one, so I hope this made some sense. So again, these keys may help you if you're going on dates, and Jane, I hope this helps you tomorrow. Um, I appreciate you watching. This is my continual mission to share this broadcast. This is why this is number 681 in an ongoing series of talks about love and relationships and feminine leadership. Um, so I hope this has been of any help to you. If you have any questions or comments, please put them below, and I'll, I'll respond to them when I sign off, because I will be signing off as soon as I finish this final completion. Um, if you're looking for love in all the wrong places, I do invite you to check out my 
um, my discovery session. I offer a free discovery session. I'll put the link in the comments, which will let you get my calendar so we can talk. Um, I think that's it. Oh, replays. If you haven't seen my broadcast before and you want to catch my replays, um, I do them every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page, which is Barry Selby on Facebook. On my business page, you can watch the replays, which is Barry Selby, the author, or you go to my YouTube channel, which is also Barry Selby, and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. There is a playlist on there called Messages from the Maskerman. So either one of those places you can find my broadcasts. Again, if you have any questions, thoughts about this broadcast, please put them below. If you want to share this with anybody else, go. Please, please feel free to do so. Again, watch yesterday's broadcast if you haven't seen that one about the masculine side of this conversation, because it may be of help to you. I had a really deep. That went deep dive. That was quite a long conversation. Um, I think that's it. I appreciate you being with me. Thanks for watching and thanks for your input. And also, I love the interaction. And uh, if you have any questions and you have some other challenges in this area, reach out and let, and and I'll see if I can help you. So with that, I thank you for watching. I will see you again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Thank you for being with me as always. And uh, I'll see you again soon. Take care of yourselves. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.